Welcome to These Are the Blades of Our Lives, the figure skating show where I talk to you about figure skating like it is drama for your mama. On today's episode, the Senior Grand Prix kicked off this weekend with Skate America, and I just want to get into it. Now, I know that um, TKRC 1888, you said you were going to be there in person, so please leave me um, some information on the comment. How was it being there live? Who's really fast? Who's really slow? Whose edges are really deep? Who's on the shallow edge? Who's being dragged around? How are the throws? Anyone else who was there in person, please let me know how are these skaters in real life in compared to what we are seeing on television. And it was good. I always loved the Grand Prix. I think it's such a great series. But what I was thinking as I was watching the Grand Prix, you know how we have like jump competition? I wish we had step sequence competition. We had step competitions because... I feel like we need that in our lives. But getting right into the skating, starting off with pairs, pairs went down exactly like I thought it would be. Um, the bronze medal here went to Chelsea Lou and Balaz Nagy. Um, the silver went to Leah Pereira and Trent Machard. And the gold went to Annika Hanak and Robert Canal. Now, starting off with Chelsea and Balaz, there is so much potential to this pair. First of all, they have beautiful lines. They match well. Their lifts is amazing. The twist was just huge. Of course, the side-by-side -side is a hot mess, but this is pairs. There is a lack of connection for me, though, between the pairs. They don't really look at each other when they skate. Gate. They don't really seem to really connect. Maybe it's the program, maybe it's the music, but they have really good elements, but not really good connections to each other. And when pairs don't have really good connections with each other, it's hard for them to connect with us, the audience. So this may be because they're a relatively new pair, but I hope they really work on that because they do have potential. The silver medal here, Leah and Trent, now, they have good chemistry with each other. There is a camaraderie. There is there is a sense of real partnership, like they're in this together. They don't have any wow factor element. Their twist is not wow. Their throw is not wow. Well, their side-by-side -side is pretty amazing. But, you know, she fell on, um, on the jumps in the long program. But they have solid consistency and I feel like while they're not one of those pairs that's gonna like blow your socks off I feel like they're gonna be consistent and clean when other skaters are not and that is what's going to get them consistently on the podium I definitely have them as an outside chance on the podium for world definitely they're gonna get a silver medal at national but they could sneak in there and get a medal at Worlds because they're so consistent, even if they don't really have a wow factor. And again, they're a relatively new pair, and there is potential there. And then, of course, the winners, Annika and Robert. Again, this pair has great chemistry, good connection. When you lift Annika up in the air. She is in beautiful position. She is eating air. When you throw her in the throws, she goes up and she comes down strong. They have ice presence. This is a team that could win a, tie, a medal at Worlds if they could get the side-by-side. -side. Their biggest weakness for me is the side by side because if you're in a field where other skaters are clean even if you have better elements if you cannot get the side by side then the better elements are not going to help you so i'm hoping that them winning this gold medal at skate america is going to be another push another motivating factor and they're going to go home and they're going to work on it even more and come back even stronger but pairs played out more or less as I expected. And then we got to men. 
men also played more or less as I expected. So for pairs, I call the podium exactly as it is. For men, the podium flipped on me with the silver and the bronze medal switching places. So the bronze medal here was Shun Soto. Silver medal was Kevin Amos. And then our goal was Ilya Melanin. There was just so much up and down with the men. You know, I just didn't know where to put it. Of course, I have to start with Dennis Vasiliev. This is going to be a really long season with Dennis and I. Like, just the inconsistency. The, the programs have such potential, especially the short program. But the jumps... Oh my God, like, I feel like Dennis has on seasons, off seasons, on season, and this is an off season for him. And at first, I was like, yes, we could put Dennis on the podium at Europeans. But if he doesn't get it together, I, I just don't see the judges really going with him. This was another difficult, you know, competition for Dennis. And then Andrew Togoshev. That short program, I, I don't even know what happened. But what I will say is he did not let the short program completely destroy him. He did come back and, you know, did much better in the long. So at least he's making progress. He used to bomb both programs, but at least now he is making progress. Um, Vladimir Let, Letvitsk, Let. Oh my God, I'm going to get this name. Vladimir Letvinsev. 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 Somebody tell me if I'm saying it wrong. Vladimir Letvinsev. For me, he really had one of the performances of the night. His short program was not that great, but he came back in that free program and he skated his heart out. And I felt he should have been the pewter winner here. I felt like he should have gotten that pewter. But no, no. And I'm going to tell you why he couldn't get it. Because the pewter went to Nika Egaze. Guys, I'm a human being. And as a human being, we tend to, our mind tend to just wonder. Even when we don't want it to, it does. Now, I don't know Nika Egadze. I don't know what kind of skater he is. I don't know what kind of person he is. I don't know what kind of work ethic he has. What I do know is that when the commentator said last year he was 28th at Worlds, and now he's winning medals, I didn't want to. But the first thing that went to my mind is, did we do the bar method on him? Did we get blood, urine, and hair? And I'm going to tell you the reason why I did that. Because let us not play like we don't understand what's going on. Russia had a state-sponsored drugging program. We're not... This is, this is no longer guessing work. They did it. They had a state-sponsored drugging program. That is why they could not compete under their own name. This is not us throwing dirt on Russia. They did it. They were found guilty. They admitted to it. Not only did Russia have a state-sponsored program, we currently have a Russian child who was doped up with four different heart medication, one of them being illegal, pending trial. Then... We have another skater who went to the same coach for the one that's pending trial and missed three drug, three drug appointments. So, of course, being the human being that I am, my mind is going to wonder, you went from eight to winning silver medal and you're sitting in the kissing cry with the same coach who happened to have a skater who... We found full heart medication in a perfectly healthy 15-year-old. Of course, I'm like, mm, I wonder if she's giving you a little bit of that grandpa juice. I don't want to because I don't know what kind of skater Nika is. Maybe he just worked really, really, really hard and put everything into it. And that's what's giving him, you know, his success right now. But because you have Iteri Tuberetsi sitting right there, Giving you your coat when you get off the ice. I cannot help my mind but thinking, I wonder what grandpa juice you're getting. 
And that's really unfortunate for you, but that's the kind of thing that I'm going to be thinking when you're going from 28th to 4th. And how did you get that 4th place? How did the judges find that five, that, that one tenth of a point to put you ahead of Vladimir? How? How? With your bargain basement Moulin Rouge. The Iteri bonus is alive and well. It is alive and very well. Because it would have been one thing if you actually had done all of your jumps. Then I could have been like the judges are giving it to you based on the technical component. You bombed the second half of your program. And then there was no program. Except for the shirt ripping at the end of the program. And please God can we make that stop. Can we please make that stop. And yet somehow you still ended up with the pewter medal that should have gone to Vladimir. Okay, whatever. Now to our medalist, Shun Soto. He looked so good in that short program, but then that long program was a bit of a hot mess. Uh, I, I, I liked Shun Soto since he was a junior, and I really want to see him get it together. I know he's coming back from injuries. I know it's not a talent thing because he could do the jumps. We know he could do the jumps. I think with him, it's just the mental competing thing. But he still managed to get a bronze medal here. I don't know how much that's going to help him at Japanese National, which is going to be a bloodbath again this year. But I want to see what he does at his second Grand Prix before I start to form an opinion of how he's going to go. Then Kevin Amos. Yes, Kevin. Yes. I know you're very emotional and I love that because you are true to who you are. Ah, so yes, Kevin. Yes, I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie, Kevin. At first, I questioned the bolero, cause you know everybody and their mama do bolero. But you know what, Kevin? You're converting me. You're making me believe in that bolero. Even with one quad, you brought so much to the competition. You were committed with your little red glove from the beginning to the end. There was intricacy. There was depth. There was a concept there was a forethought this is a program that was created with a concept that you are willing to commit 100 to for me that kevin amos bolero both the short and the short the long program really for me from kevin was the highlight of the men's competition but specifically that bolero where you fought for every single jump that to me was the highlight of the night Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I had you in the bronze medal because I know you could be inconsistent, but you proved me wrong, and I have never been so happy to be proven wrong. Thank you, Kevin. And, of course, the winner here is to be expected was Ilya Melanin. Again, slowly but surely, he's paying attention to the other detail. I think it was very hard. It was very smart. For them to take out the quad axle, I think it was very smart for them to take out some of the quads to do a good, technically difficult program, but to give him room to breathe, to actually skate. So again, I feel like Ilya is very young, and the fact that they're listening to the criticisms, they're improving, really gives me hope to the kind of Ilya we're going to have as the years go by. And then we got to the ice dance. Some of this made me very happy. Some of this made me very sad. Um, I'm going to start with um, Hannah Lynn and Ye Kwan. Love their free dance. I mean, I like both of their program. I like the, the Prince Rhythm dance, but I love the free dance. They are so committed to that free dance. For me... They sell their free dance more than any of the other couples that were there tonight. This is a beautiful free dance, and they are so 
They are so committed to it and they deliver it so beautifully. Again, they're a very young couple. We're not really looking at them for this quad, for this Olympic cycle, but next Olympic cycle, I really see the potential of where they could go. Um, then, you know, the, the, the young brother and sister, Katrina, um, Mawas, Ma, Makova and Daniel Marquez. I don't like their free dance. I mean, they have had such wonderful programs that really just showcase how talented they are. But I just don't feel like this free dance does that. You know, I just don't feel like this particular free dance does that for them. But otherwise, a, a really nice pair with a lot of potential. Omar Brown and Cage Brown. Oh my God, they have such talent. They have so much potential in terms of their speed, their edge, their musicality. This is, again, another young team. Not this quad, not this Olympic cycle, but next Olympic cycle, as skaters start to retire, they are going to automatically move up the rank because they already have a solid base and a solid foundation. Um, then Olivia Smart and Tim Dyke, she finally changed the outfit and immediately a new season best. Why? Because figure skating, especially ice dance, is a full package kind of sport. And that first, the, the metallic pants, it, it was a hot mess. But this new one piece, lovely, just lovely, lovely. And immediately the program got better and the scores went up. Again, this is a brand new pair. They are not thinking about Skate America as their end game. They're not thinking about the Grand Prix Final as their end game. They're planning towards the 2026 Olympic. And so for me, I'm judging them on where I project them to be in 2026, not where I see them now. But I will admit they are very well matched in terms of like their height, their lines, their skating skills. Yeah, they're not gelling 100% yet because they're a brand new pair. But despite all of that, they are very well matched. There is a lot of potential there. There's a lot of potential there for this pair. So I'm really looking forward to it. Now, the thing that made me the saddest about the ice dance is Natalie um, Teshlerova and Philippe Teschler. This pair is so incredibly talented. You guys know I am a fan of Natalie and Philip. Their edges are so deep. They knee bend. The speed, the power, the effortlessness in their lifts. This team has everything except the political pull in the judges' favors. I do not know why the judges are burying this team when this team has everything. Natalie is out there eating the ice like the queen that she is. She is killing it. And Philip is there supporting and presenting her every step of the way. And it breaks my heart because I know they're going to get buried at European for other skaters that should never be ahead of them. And I feel for this young pair. And I just want you to know, Natalie and Philip, you are so talented and your time will come. Your time will come. Please keep going at it because your time will come. Then, you know, above Natalie, I wouldn't have had them above Natalie and Philip. We had Caroline Green and Michael Parson. Again, this was a team I was very invested in a couple of seasons ago. They were young. They were fresh. They had good programs. I was like, yes, this is new. This is unique. I don't think there's anything new or unique about either their free dance or their rhythm dance. There's nothing memorable about them for me right now. That doesn't mean they're bad skaters. It just means they're not doing anything for me. So I wouldn't have had them over Natalie and Phillip, but the judges felt differently. So there you had it. 
Um, so the bronze medal here is Yevgenia Lopova and Jeffrey Bassard. Now this team, I'm going to say I like their rhythm dance for the simple fact that they went their own way. Their rhythm dance is uniquely them. They didn't do what everyone else is doing. They did something that's unique to them. And for that alone, I really like it. Their free dance is just generically lovely. Nothing wrong with it. It's just generically lovely. And then the silver medal went to my la la couple. Marjorie La Joie and Zachary La Ga. My babies made a comeback. Yes, their first outing was rough. But they shook it off. They came back here. The thriller. This is thriller. Ah, ah. I felt it. The outfits were on point. The twizzles were bang, bang, bang. The whole program, like, you know, Zachary is a very reserved person in the Kiss and Cry, but when he's on ice, he's giving you everything. Oh, I felt it. He was in character. She was in character. Marjorie and Zachary were killing that thriller, and I was there for the ride. And then their free dance. I already told you guys, like, I love their free dance this season, especially, like, that ending spin sequence they they what I love about Marjorie and Zachary is that every season they try to do something new they're growing their repertoires as skaters as artists and they're not trying to stick to a particular mode you have skaters who find something that works for them and they do it over and over again which is fine and then you have skaters like Marjorie and Zachary who just tries different things and I think that's also a good way to go. I love it. And I knew my little Lala babies were going to make a comeback and they are slowly making their way up the podium. I hope they make the Grand Prix final this time around. Please. I hope they make the Grand Prix final. And then finally, the winner here, Madison Chalk and Evan Bates. So the, the rhythm dance is good. It's, it's good. It's it. like their rhythm, their programs always start off the season and, and know, not in its final stage. They, you know, they work on it. They mold it until they get to the final stage. The Queens medley is really good. It's, it's eighties. It meets the requirement as always. Madison looks fabulous. The free dance. I love it. Guys, I love this free dance. Madison's flexibility is being put to 110% use. The positions they are holding, the lifts are unique and original. I love this free dance. It speaks to me. I don't know why, but it's just something very funky and very, it's very avant-garde, very modern boxy dance. I don't know. There is something about this free dance that I really, really like. And you guys know how many competition has just, just destroyed me so far this season. So to have them come to, it's okay. Let me just repeat that. This whole competition was such a refreshing de-stressor for me. Everybody came, everybody skated clean and ice dance. There were no falls. And I was like, thank you, skating gods. So all in all, ice dance, there were some real moments of high for me. And then some real moments of just like, what are the judges doing? But all in all, ice, ice dance was enjoyable. And then finally, we get to the women. The tech callers were giving out cues and carrots like they thought these young women were rabbits. And I'm not opposed to that. I am not opposed to a tech caller doing their job, getting to the technicality of it, as long as it's done fairly for everyone. And that was what was gonna ha what was happening here. Everybody was getting those edge calls. Everybody was getting those cues. Everybody was getting the unders. And I hope that this energy remains.
throughout the season. Because what I hated to see was when people were doing spins and they were traveling from New York to Istanbul and those spins were getting positive GOE. When jumps were obviously pre-rotated where a whole rotation was done on the ice and we were getting positive GOE instead of those jumps being downgraded. Because that was not a triple, that was a double. Because that was not a quad, that was a triple. That's what I hated seeing. But... Where Tech Caller is calling everyone fairly and equally, I am all about that. Now, the women did not go for the most, well, they, it went for the most part how I thought it would go, but there were some minor differences that I really didn't see coming. There, there were some unexpected surprises that the women had in store for me. Some of it, Unpleasant, some of it quite pleasant. So starting off with some of the um, pleasant surprises. Mona Sheba had a much better outing here than she has had in previous competition. However, I have to make this comment, guys. I do feel like Mona Sheba reminds me somewhat of Moran Honda. Moran Honda was another Hamada skater who was brilliant, absolutely brilliant as a junior. And then we don't know what happened. She made that transition to seniors and it just all fell apart. Now, I know history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And I'm hoping that the confidence that Mona Sheba had when she was a junior, she could find that confidence back and have a very successful senior career because this skater is incredibly talented. This is an incredibly talented skater and I would hate to see that talent never reach its full potential. So whatever blockage is going on with her, I really hope they're able to work it out. Um, another skater that had a difficult outing here um, was Yu Young. But again, this is a comeback for Yu Young. The jumps obviously are still a little bit of a struggle. But every time she comes out and she competes, I feel like she's making her way back. Um, you know, Zayang, Zaiji Eng, Nini, really nice in the short program. A really nice short program for her, especially after what happened at the Shanghai Open where she was skating on home ice and everything just fell apart. Here she had a really nice short program. The free didn't go exactly to plan, but she still came and did what she needed to do. Um, then Mano um, Kawabe, mm, that, that, she took a really hard fall in that long program. She went down and again, that referee that I feel like we should have in skating that stops uh, you know, the competition when a skater takes a fall, that looks dangerous. She had one of those falls where I was like, oof, she going to get back up. But she did. Then we had Ekaterina Karakova, and she was in the kissing cry with Brian Orser. It's good to see them two back together again. I Ekaterina is a fan favorite. She is my favorite. She's so charming. She's so likable. At the end of her free program, she went to pick up a, a toy and she lost her balance and she flopped out on the ice. She is just so cute. And I want her to do well, but good God, her jumps are so under-rotated. They are so under-rotated. And that Euler, oh, it just looks hideous. But I'm willing to forgive her for almost anything because she's so adorable. And I like her so much as a skater. Um, and then in fifth place, we had Amber Glenn. What can I say? Amber looked fabulous in that short program. From the outfits to the jumps, everything was fabulous. A fabulous short program. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. When we got into the free and she did the triple axel, 
that she did the triple flip, triple toe, a part of me was like, yes, yes, finally, finally, Amber is going to deliver on all that potential. And then it just all fell apart, as it has done in so many other competitions. I, I just, I don't know. The potential is there. The talent is there. But it doesn't matter how talented you are, how good you do in practice. If you can't deliver in competition, then it's, it's really hard. This was another heartbreaking outing for Amber. And, and it was such a shame because the potential is there. Even the judges were willing to go with her. So... Oh, it is what it is. There's there's nothing more to say other than it is what it is. It, it was another Amber Glenn outing. In fourth place, the pewter was Hannah Yoshida, whom I personally had in third place. And she, I had her in the bronze medal in third place. And she was in third place overall in the free program. But what happened is she dug herself a hole that was too deep. In the short program, she went for the triple axle, which was gutsy, but she popped it and only did a single axle, which means that entire jump was valid. She had no points for that jump, and that put her into such a hole. And then she went again for the triple axle in the free program, and again, she couldn't quite deliver on it. And with those two combinations, even though the rest of the jumps were really good and she skated an almost clean program in the free, it just wasn't enough to dig her out of the hole and put her on the podium. But I still, I respect the fact that they're going for the triple axel. And if she wants to get out of Japanese national, she may just need that triple axel. So I think this is a smart um, plan of action for them to keep get going for the triple axel until she gets it consistently. In third place, coming out of nowhere, surprising me. And I don't know why, because she just, you know, did the same thing at the um, Shanghai Open. But Nina Petrokina is not playing this season. I like this skater because she's like a street fighter. She's about that jungle, that rumble in the jungle. There is something gritty about her. She fought for every jump. And when her jumps are on, she is a girthy, girthy jumper. And you guys know how much I love me a girthy jumper. And I was so happy to see her come here and deliver two clean programs. And again, that bronze medal competition at European just keeps getting more and more and more difficult. And I would not want to be the judges at European because Nina is now putting her name in the ring. She is now delivering consistently and demanding that the judges take her into account. I think this this was a really good outing for her. She's definitely making her statement. She's definitely saying she wants to be a contender. And I was really happy to see it. Um, in second place, she was in third after the short program. And in second place is Isabella Vito. Her jumps are horrendous. They, they are just horrendous. How those jumps are getting positive grades of GOE in the level that they're getting. There is no no speed out of those jumps. There is no flow. The bending over okay. It is what it is. It it is what it is. She eked out those jumps and and there and the thing about Isabel is it's there. She's musical. She's got ice presence. She's got nice lines. She's committed to her program. It's just that the jumps and the packaging for me just makes it very, very difficult. But she did enough here and she comfortably won the silver medal. The gold went to Miss Luna Hendricks. Oh my God. Oh my God, Luna. 
Ah. Uh, the just I don't understand what her team is going for in terms of the packaging. Like uh, let me I'm, I'm not going to talk about her outfit because you guys know how I feel about um her Dollar Tree DIY long program outfit. The short program outfit is is it is not much better either, but I'm going to leave that alone. What I am going to talk about is her jumps, which, as I said before, from the Japan Open looked amazing. Luna looks like she wants it this season. She is coming for it. Last season, the European title was within her grasp and she let it go. I do not think she's making that same mistake again this season. There was no hesitation in her jump. She went into everything, both in the short program and in the free program. She went into every jump, every spin, every step with the utmost fight. And there was a confidence in her eyes like I have got this. And it was wonderful to watch. Neither one of these programs are my favorite programs of her, but she is committed to them and she is delivering them. That long program, she went at it and she fought. And I was so happy to see it. Her jumps look fabulous. Her jumps really look fabulous. And if she could continue on this path and she could peak at Europeans and at Worlds, this could be a very good year for Luna. All in all, I was very happy with the start of the season. I was very happy with the Grand Prix for the most part. There were some mm, issues that I had with some placements with Iteri sitting in the kissing cry looking like the cat that ate the canary. But overall... I really, really enjoyed the Grand Prix Final. But you guys let me know what you thought, especially if you were there in person. Please let me know what you thought and how are these skaters live. Let me know in the comments.